Hey everybody and welcome into Clearing the Benches. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the NHL future, especially some of the prospects that are going to be getting drafted in this upcoming June 2024 NHL draft. Now, the lists that I'm drawing this information from is coming from HockeyProspects.com. What they do is they put out like a preseason, early season list that says all of the prospects and in the order that they think they're going to be drafted or, you know, according to how they're playing at the time that the lists are put out. Then in the midterm, around Christmas time, they put out their second list. And that shows, you know, who's moved up, who's moved down, who stayed the same. So the midterm list just came out maybe about 10 days ago. So I wanted to go over and see who's moved up from the early season list to where they are now. Take a look at some of the teams, like I said, who's going to be drafting. And let's see where they might go. So first and foremost, Macklin Celebrini. He was number one then. He's number one now. Uh, pretty much every one of these like draft experts say that it's going to be nearly impossible for anyone to overtake him as the number one pick in next year's NHL draft. You know, uh, Connor McDavid is kind of like Gretzky light, and then Connor Bedard is kind of Connor McDavid light, and now they're saying Celebrini is kind of Connor Bedard light. So um, there's no doubting that this kid's got a lot of talent. He's tearing it up at BU right now. And um, like I said, most of the hockey experts say there's really zero chance that anyone else on this list is going to pass him and become the number one pick. Now, when I look at some of the teams who could be picking first overall, you know, we got to go through the lottery system. But again, you know, you got these same teams up there. Uh, the Senators, you know, they're going to lose a first rounder because of the Shane Pinto incident, but they get to pick which year. So uh, I doubt they're going to do it in a lottery year. So I'm assuming the Senators are going to be picking. You know, of course, if they got the first overall, everyone's going to take Celebrini. But if they don't get, you know, first overall, I can see the Senators. They need D big time. You know, they just traded for Jeff. Uh, Jacob Chikrin and you know already there's rumors that they're going to be moving them out so I'm assuming that they would need to fill uh, their roster spot on D. Um, next up on the list of prospects and he stayed the same as well basically the top eight players on this list stayed the same from the preseason rankings to the midterms which is meaning they are all status quo. Nobody's having, you know, the greatest year of all time and no one's having the worst year of all time either. So next up on this list, you've got a, a left-handed center, Caden Lidstrom, medicine hat of the WHL. Um, like I said, he is pretty much predicted to go right behind Celebrini. I know that, you know, at the end of last year, it was Celebrini, Cole Iserman, and then Cole Iserman didn't make the World Junior team. And although he's still on our list, he has, you know, moved down for a while there. He was the consensus number two right behind Celebrini. But now the consensus number two is Caden Lidstrom. And again, you look at these teams that are going to be drafting high. Columbus, you know, they might blow it up, tear it out. They might, you know, move on from Johnny Goudreau already. Maybe they're going to make him the centerpiece and they would draft a guy like Lidstrom. You know, you can never have enough guys down the middle. Um, Chicago, you know, I'm sure if they didn't get Celebrini to go with Bedard, they would love to have a kid like Caden uh, Lidstrom. So, again, all of these first eight players have had good years, and they're staying where they're supposed to be projected according to the preseason. Next up, you've got a left-handed defenseman. Anton Siliev. He's playing in Russia right now. Uh, again, you ask all the draft pundits and, you know, it's really a matter of if you like Fords or Chevys, whether you like him or Sam Dickinson. Uh, they're both left-handed D. Dickinson's ranked right behind Siliev fourth, and he's playing in London of the OHL, and he's having a good year. So, um, you know, if you're not getting Celebrini or Lidstrom, you've got two defensemen that you can pick from. And looking at the Senators, they're going to need D. Columbus could always use some D. Chicago's going to need D. The Sharks, uh, they're definitely going to need D. And the Ducks, who just moved on from Jamie Drysdale, 
are going to need some D. So um, I would definitely say Siliev and Dickinson are pretty much locks to go. You know, if possibly even one of com one of them could go second overall, but for sure third and fourth. Uh, next up, you've got a big wing Ivan Demidov out of Russia, another guy who can score. I don't want to say it will, but he is a scorer. And, you know, looking at the top five teams that we just mentioned, pretty much except for the Ducks, who I think are kind of really going to look more for D. Uh, I think they're, I don't want to say loaded up front, but they've got a lot of young studs up front with McTavish and Terry. And, you know, if Zegris can ever get it back together. But uh, I could see... Demidov going to one of those teams and, you know, in two years being playing on the Ducks, you know, and getting some time in there and getting his feet wet early as opposed to later on. Uh, next up, we have the previously mentioned Cole Iserman. Um, you know, again, this kid has got a lot of talent. For a long time, it was him right behind Celebrini. You know, he's dropped down to it looks like about seventh on the list. And again, he stayed at seven. So, you know, whatever happened to him that he didn't make the World Juniors team, he's figured it out and he's got his game back on the tracks and he's doing well. Um, and again, you know, just from all the hype and all the talk and seeing him last year uh, playing in the NCAA games, you know, you know, this kid's got a lot of talent and you know, this kid is going to be good in the future. And a lot of times it's just a matter of the right situation. You know, can they put him with somebody that can help him grow? Um, you know, maybe the kid needs a little bit of mentoring and they put him with somebody that can help him do all of that. So I know Cole Eiserman's dropped down uh, the list from last year, but in terms of preseason to where he's at now, he's holding steady. Uh, next up, Everybody just got a real big look at him during the juniors. Consta Hellenius out of Finland. Uh, center right wing. This kid is good. Uh, he's not afraid to, you know, get gritty in there. He's not afraid to do a little sandpaper, go to the corners, go to the front of the net. You know, he'll give you a little shove after the whistle. So um, this kid, I think, in a couple of years, maybe he's not going to be a first liner. Maybe he's going to be, you know, a middle tier guy. Maybe he's going to be a second or third line guy. But I think in a couple of years, Hellenius is going to really be a good NHL player. And, you know, Finland, obviously, they've got some players that have come out of there and have done well. So uh, I'll be looking forward to see how he does. Next up on the list, and in my opinion, this was a guy that I had ranked up higher earlier in the year, and he's doing really well at Michigan State, but Artyom Levshunov. Um, I personally thought, you know, when these lists came out that he was going to be right up there with Siliev and Dickinson, you know, in the two, three, four, five range. But um, he's moved down a little bit. You know, he's about eight or ninth now on this list. But again, he's having a good year at Michigan State. He's playing NCAA hockey. He's getting a taste of it. And, you know, he's coming over here and he's getting, you know, North American lifestyle. He's figuring it out. He's going to learn English. He's going to learn just how things are in America, you know, in Canada versus back in Russia. And I think that's always a big, big step in the right direction. You know, when you can get a kid who you can help grow, you can keep an eye on him. He's local. It makes a big difference. Then, you know, you got somebody drafted a zillion miles away and you've got to go through three guys just to get a message through to them sometimes. So as far as Lev Shunov, uh, I could see any one of these teams that needs help defensively picking him with a smile on their face and not feeling in the least that he's going to be anything less than really solid. Um, next up, you've got another right D, Carter Uremchuk, Calgary hitman of the WHL. Again, WHL puts out grinders. Guys who, you know, they fight in the WHL a lot. I see, you know, on YouTube videos all the time. Every time one of these scraps in the junior comes up, it's always, you know, Spokane against, you know, Tri-Cities or something like that. And um, Cartier Remchuk, he is another kid, right-handed D. Those are a big sought-after commodity in the NHL. And sometimes if you're a left-handed D and you're a little bit better than the right-handed D, you know, supply and demand. So the guy who's a right-handed D may not be better than the left-handed D, but he could get taken before that. So um, 
I think a guy like your M. Chuck to me, any one of these teams that, you know, is on our little five team list here, any one of those teams that picks him in like two to three years, you're looking at a top two defenseman on your team. Uh, next up, one of my favorite kids, Berkeley Catan, left-handed center, uh, Spokane in the WHL. This kid can score. He can scrap. He likes to mix it up. He likes to go to the front of the net. He likes to go to the corners. And he likes to compete. This kid has got an edge to him. And this kid wants to win big time. I know you can say that about a lot of players. But then there's certain guys that when you see him out there, uh, they stand out a little bit. And in my opinion, this kid has stood out. Um, he's been in some big time scraps already this year. He fought um, Jerome McGinley's kid, Taj McGinley, earlier on in the year. And that is, you know, no easy task. So I give it up to the kid. And I think he is definitely going to be rock solid in the NHL because of the type of game he plays. And, you know, kind of like a Matthew Boldy, uh, you know, they get to play more games earlier on in their career because they are a little bit more mature physically. Maybe they're a little bit more um, mature mentally in terms of not being afraid to go in there and mix it up. So uh, Berkeley Catan, I'm going to say top 10 NHL draft next year. He, you're going to hear his name called. And then the last name I've got on our little list here is Zeev Buham. Uh, the left-handed D out of Denver. Just got a good look at him at the World Junior Championships. The kid uh, scored a couple of goals. He plays good D. And he's another name that, in my opinion, is kind of climbing up the ranks. And, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise if a team picking in the top five called his name in the June draft. Um, he, you know, he's... He's got a little bit of jump to his game, so he's he's good defensively and he's responsible defensively, but he's not afraid to jump into the play as well. So um, who knows if you can do that as much when you're playing on these teams that are defensively starved. You know, some of these teams, the Senators, CBJ, Chicago, the Sharks, the Ducks, you know, you may not be able to jump into the play. You may have to play more of a structured stay-at-home game, but um, I definitely think Booyam is going to be a kid who in a couple of years is going to be rock solid in the NHL. Now, I wanted to just bring up a couple of guys that moved up. Uh, Berkeley Catan, preseason, they had him at, ranked at 10th. He's moved up to 9th. Um, Ty Jaginla, another kid you're going to have to start paying attention for. This kid, he went from 13th in the preseason up to 10th. And that's pretty much been about one of the bigger jumps in terms of guys jumping up into the top 10. And then Booyam, he went from 16 in the preseason to 12. Um, another couple of guys that were on that list, Igor uh, Chernyashov, he's big 6'2", 192-pound left wing, plays for the Moscow Dynamo Juniors. He was 11 in the preseason, stayed 11 there. So... Uh, again, I see a lot of these kids are going to be drafted very, very high. I would say probably of this list here, you know, there's going to be one or two kids that fall out of that grouping, you know, when draft day comes. And then there's going to, oh, as always, you know, look at the Coyotes did last year. There's going to be some big surprises in the draft as well. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. And if you could like, subscribe, and as always here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.